So uh, I'm Eddie Winstead. Um, I work for ISC. Um, but today I'm here to present to you all a case study about how Facebook um, is utilizing Kia hook points for uh, modernizing their production data centers. Um, so a little bit about me, I guess. I've been with ISC since 2011, seen a lot, of course. Uh, one of the very humbling things about working at ISC uh, relates to you all's insanity. <laughs> all right, so we, we're really good at uh, low layer protocol development, design, and um, coding. Right, but then you guys come along and you do really insane things with this software. So thank you for that. All right. So this talk is a lot about Facebook doing crazy things. So my apologies to the Facebook people. Um, all right. So uh, and this is uh, this is mostly from the uh, Facebook perspective. So why Kia? Well, uh, ISC DHCP is our DHCP server, open source, freely available, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it is now 21 years old, right? So it's legal drinking age, no matter where you are. Uh, and I'm very aware that it's, it has driven many of you to drink. Yes, if it has, please raise your hand. Okay, very good. Um, so it, you know, it's, really, it's been really good, it's stable, it's done what it's supposed to do. Um, it's certainly pretty slow by modern standards. Um, there's that flat file thing that you have to store your lease information into a, a text file. Maybe not what you want these days. Um, there is, you know, Omapi, which I'm certain has driven many of you to drink. Can I get hands again? Yes? Okay. So there's a way via Omapi that you could change configuration to a running DHCP server without having to restart it. Uh, it's not fully functional and it's quite cumbersome, uh, to put it mildly. Uh, and then there's the whole issue of uh, DHCP failover. Uh, and this is one of the things Facebook was encountering is that they had their DHCP servers uh, essentially behind a load balancer. Um, and they had it in a, a, a peer arrangement. Uh, but one of them was essentially uh, active. The other was sort of standby. They wanted to do away with this. Okay. Uh, and then, yeah, those, those man pages. So dhpd.conf man page, uh, our apologies. All right. So um, about Kia itself, uh, it is a DHCP server only. So there's three parts to the whole DHCP thing. And, and also, I realize that DHCP is, is sort of like the broccoli of network operations. It's not that exciting, right? Um, but bear with me. So for Kia, we have a DHCP server only. Um, if you are familiar with ISC DHCP, we also have a relay. Um, that essentially takes the broadcast packets, makes them unicast to, to find a DHCP server somewhere. Um, and then the, the client side. Um, so we didn't feel like relay or client needed any attention. If you have differing thoughts on that, please let me know either at the mic or um, afterwards. Um, so yeah, it is our alternative to ISC DHCP. Of course, the standard is compliant, uh, open source. It does do v6, uh, DHCP v6 and uh, DHCP v4. Uh, and it's very easily extensible uh, for some value of easily. Okay? Um, we're going to talk about how Facebook has extended Kia via hooks. Um, and yeah, these are the things that Facebook wanted. These are what they ended up with. Um, so one thing about the restarts is in Facebook's experience, um, in their prior data center uh, deployment magic, um, you know, NIC cards are going bad and you're changing them out and you're changing out hardware. Anytime they would make changes to their uh, DHCP configuration, it would take sometimes up to four hours for all those changes to propagate. Okay, that's a really, really long time in 2016. Um, so with what I'm going to explain what they've done with uh, Kia, they've gotten that down to just a couple of minutes. So we're pretty excited about that. Uh, we're also very excited that uh, we actually started out with doing uh, really good documentation up front. Okay? So a lot of what I'm going to talk about, you know, if you... One thing to know about Kia hooks is you have to have some coding knowledge to make them. Okay? And so they are, it is in C++. Uh, Key is written in C++ as well, but if you write a hook yourself, you're going to do that in C++. So there is some coding knowledge required. 
Um, but we do have a developer's guide that I'll have a link to at the end of the, the session that, uh, that you can reference, okay? And this is how Facebook did it. They actually started, uh, before they contacted us, they, they went through the developer's guide, and this is how they developed their hooks, okay? All right. That's a lot of what I just said. Um, but the important thing is that, uh, so you have, you have the DHCP traffic that's, uh, that happens, um, and what these hook points are allowing you to do is makes, insert your own logic at differing places in the process, okay? So here's a little slide that sort of represents this. Uh, so we have the DHCP packet processing going on, and at various points in this processing, we can call out to custom code that either you write yourself or we write. We have a couple of hooks that are available with Kia. Uh, in Facebook's example, they did all this themselves. Um, so uh, part of this is that we really want you to try it out and do those insane things that you do and then come back to us and let us know how it's working. Um, if you develop a hook, please do talk to us and please do uh, let us know how it went and, and what you're doing with it. All right, so here's some links because, you know, I, I, I wasn't involved with the Facebook team, so I'm talking about someone else's configuration, which as you all know, can get you in trouble, right? So here's some more detailed information. Um, Facebook has been very open about this, so I don't feel, you know, uh, I, feel, I don't feel any discomfort with sharing uh, what they've already shared online. A couple of the slides that you're gonna see actually come from these presentations. Um, so, but I encourage you to go out there and hear it directly from them as well. All right, so how they're doing this is um, essentially, so you see the, the DHCP packet processing happening. Uh, when they receive a packet, they let the Kia server handle all the DHCP protocol things, and that's great. Um, they then sort of call out to this custom library where they store what the client traffic uh, has indicated, right? Because they have to come back to that later. I'll explain some more of this on the, the next slide. Um, then they do some funkiness. They essentially talk to their own database, so their own inventory system, okay? So they're not storing any of their lease information in um, with Kia itself, so there's no database thing happening within the Kia server itself. So database is elsewhere, that's where their inventory is, they call out to it. Um, so for things like, you know, uh, if, if the client indicates that it's at this MAC address, we send it back this IP address, or we tell it the Pixie boot here, et cetera, et cetera. So essentially they skip a lot of these steps um, that you see in normal DHCP packet processing. And then they come back at the end and they hand the client what it needs to see and they let Kia do all the DHCP protocol talk, right? So um, here's uh, the life of a packet uh, at Facebook in using the hook library. So again, packet come in, comes in from the client. If you're familiar with DHCP, there's uh, in V4 and V6, there is a handshake, right? DHCP handshake. Uh, it's Dora in V4, discover, offer, request, acknowledgement. Uh, V6 is solicit, advertise, request, and I forget the final R, but you get the idea, right? Um, two of those packets come from the client, two are coming from the server, okay? So it's this handshake routine that you have. Um, so in Facebook's deployment, a packet comes in. Facebook, uh, uh, again, Kia handles all the protocol things. Um, they then do this call, they, they essentially store what the client has sent, okay? Then they have Kia call out to their, again, their database inventory system. Um, the memory cache thing there is actually one of their war stories, right? When they first started doing this, they, uh, they made the, the inventory system fall over. Right, so that's always, that's always a good one, right? So they had to do some in-memory cache for their database system. Um, they get the information that they need, at, again, you know, what IP address they're gonna hand out to the client, whether it needs to pixie boot, et cetera, et cetera. They give that back to the, the hook point in Kia. They store that in the uh, context object that you see there. Um, then they essentially skip the key of processing of deciding on a subnet, deciding on a uh, uh, lease or anything like that. So they, because they don't need it, they've already done the assignment themselves, right? So then they come in at the packet sin uh, hook point and they put all their information from their inventory system into the packet. 
They let Kia do the protocol talk again, and everybody's happy. Okay. So uh, apologies for the cat photo if you don't like them. Uh, I happen to like them. This is a Facebook slide, though. Um, so uh, here's another uh, nice thing that folks really like about Kia and that Facebook did as well, is that uh, the config file is in JSON. Okay, so there's no, there's not what you're used to with dhcpd.conf. So it's in JSON format, so they're able to easily uh, automate sending out config files to various uh, servers, so they like this a lot. So here's a very basic one where we're doing some logging, uh, the DHCP4 part, and you see where we're calling our hooks library there, excuse me. Um, we're doing this on interface ETH0 and then some, you know, some lease time things. Uh, but here's where the, the funniness starts for Facebook, all right. Does anyone know what they just did there? <laughs> they defined all of IPv4, private and public, as um, a subnet, awesome. <laughs> right, this is the insanity that we love from you guys. Um, the reason they did that is, um, and this is, uh, you know, candidly speaking, uh, when, they f when Facebook finally contacted us and told us what they were doing, um, they were using Kia in production data centers at a 0 0.91 release, right? So our immediate reaction was, this made us very happy. Uh, the one right after that is like, Oh crap, <laughs> you know, oh no. Um, anyway, when they adopted Kia, they didn't, uh, we didn't have host reservations available, right? So um, they need to do that, but they're gonna do that in their inventory database. So since they're skipping all the subnet selection and all that fun stuff, you know, since we didn't have host reservation, they just defined IPv4 as their subnet. That's awesome. All right, so um, that's, how they're doing things. Um, they have, again, shared their hook code. Um, I didn't include it with these slides, but I did include the link here. Um, I want to say it's about six slides, their hooks code. Um, and again, it's, it's out there. Uh, go take a look at it, and you can see exactly what they're doing with the DHCP packets and, and whatnot. All right. So, uh, this is an interesting concept. Uh, so again, back to what you guys do with things that we never expect. Uh, one of the things that you've already come back to us and said, hey, that's really awesome that we can hook into backend databases to store our lease information. What if we could also store our config in the database, right? So that's something that we hadn't thought of. Um, that's not available yet, but it is something that we're, we're uh, very highly considering. So if you have thoughts on that, please let me know afterwards. Um, so, but essentially, there's just still the same idea, right? There's these points within the DHCP processing that we can call out to different things. Uh, in the Facebook example, I don't know what their database is. Uh, I will say that Kia, uh, you can hook into uh, MySQL or Postgres. Currently, there are other databases uh, soon to be uh, coming, uh, Cassandra will be pretty soon. We have someone that's uh, uh, essentially um, donating that code to us. They've already written it, it's already working for them. Um, but this sort of gets us to this crazy concept. I mean, we're, you, you, possibly you're familiar with like stateless configuration in IP, uh, IPv6, um, but that usually doesn't involve a DHCP server. Right, so this gives us some some interesting things to start uh, to to start talking about. Right, um, you can do things on your database, and it doesn't affect your uh, your running DHCP service. In other words, all right. So some additional hooks examples. Uh, you can read them here. Um, we. Again, part of this is, you know, the beauty of what we do is we don't really know what crazy thing you're going to do with it. So please do crazy things to it and let us know, right? So your hook here. Um, this gets to another crazy thing, right? So Anycast DHCP. So part of this is just getting you all to think about, wow, what, what, how can we change things, okay? And this is actually what uh, Facebook is doing in their data centers. Their DHCP servers now answer on one IP address. All right, so they've been able to do this by um, having the inventory system on the back end, 
um, and having their Kia servers, DHCP servers, only do the DHCP talk, right? Um, so this brings up some interesting things, right? Uh, who in here has had um, pain about DHCP failover? Yeah, some people are raising both of their hands. That's, that's great. All right. So DHCP failover is actually, uh, it's a protocol design thing, right? IC DHCP certainly implements it. Um, but the design is that you have failover pairs, right? So um, this can be problematic, right? Um, one of the things, and probably the guy that raised both hands, uh, if, one, if, if you actually enter a failover situation, getting them resynced back up when the problem is resolved uh, takes a very long conversation between those servers. All right, this is a, an operational nightmare, right? Because you, you need the server to be handing out addresses, not resyncing. Okay. So with this, if we hook into now, I, I want to make clear that if what I'm talking about is not the protocol level uh, or not the, the protocol defined DHCP failover. What I'm saying is that there's a possibility, and some people are already doing it, uh, we're testing it out ourselves um, because people, other people came up with this idea, but there's a possibility that you could have you know, N plus one DHCP servers and they all hook into a database, right? So if they're all hooking into the same database, um, this sort of could possibly solve this failover problem. Uh, this fell over pain, okay? Um, so, um, what else did I want to say about this one? This is, just, this is one of the ones that we're really excited about because we know that fell over is, is uh, historically problematic, okay? Um, so, let's see, all right. All right, here's a little uh, reference slide. This is sort of uh, just how you would uh, build your hooks library. Uh, this is for your reference. However, I'll, 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 I'll say that if you are interested in developing your own hooks, please do, do go read the developer's guide. That's where you're gonna get like real examples and real guidance on how you do these things, okay? Um, if you have some hooks issues, uh, if you have a crash, for example, we hope not, but if you do, uh, there, these may, this may be one of the problems. Uh, you may need to rebuild with a new version of Kia, et cetera. Uh, if you're seeing some memory growth, it may be that your hooks library is not freeing up memory. Um, and always try to just sort of take out your hooks and see if Kia works without them, to see if it's really a hooks problem. Uh, the other thing, and this is one of the things that uh, Facebook and um, the other people who are already running Kia are benefiting from is that, and this is one thing I really like about it, is that there's differing loggers, okay? So there's sort of a master logger, and then there's all these other loggers that you can use, okay? So for this example, if I'm having a problem with my hooks, I can set the hooks logger to debug and everything else remains at a sane setting so that my logs don't overflow, okay? There are, if you look in the documentation, we have, I don't know, about 40 of these loggers right now uh, with more on the way. So we're, we're very excited about this part as well. And of course, with standard, like you can, of course, with debugging, you can raise it as high as you like based on what exactly you're trying to find out. All right, so to the references, uh, kia.isc.org is the main one. Um, there's uh, a documentation here about how you actually implement. Um, Kia users is our mailing list. I highly recommend you get on that um, if you're interested in this. So right now, because of the sort of lower volume of uh, adopters, we have some really big ones, but of course it's, it's pretty few. Uh, you actually get some pretty uh, quick responses from our developers, so please make use of that. Uh, just a note here that uh, there are some operating systems that have picked up Kia, uh, and you can, instead of having to install it from source, you know, if you're old school, you can certainly do that, but if you want it packaged, you know, your OS of choice may already have it. Uh, Fedora, uh, Red Hat, a lot of the BSDs have it. Uh, and then a quick start guide. And again, if you're going to actually develop hooks, uh, please do check out the developer's guide. And with that, we have about 10 minutes for questions. Uh, we actually have one of the DHCP coders in the room. He's hiding, right? 
So hopefully one of you will ask me a question that I have to defer to him. That'd be great. All right, go ahead. Carlos? Um, Carlos Vicente with Dyn. Um, some very cool features there. Um, the only nitpick would be, uh, and I don't know how difficult it would be to, to achieve, but if you could make it so that it, the hooks could be written in other languages other than C++, like Python, and something more friendly. That would be great. Thank you. Uh, Sean, do you want to come up and address that question to the microphone? There he is, yeah. <laughs> uh, Sean Ruth here, ISC. <laughs> yeah, this is something that we have plans to do eventually, but it's something we classify as relatively low priority, so it's not going to get done until we get a lot of other features done first. Thanks, Sean. Um, is there uh, anyone from Facebook that wants to step up and say uh, good things, bad things, let me know what I got wrong, et cetera? Uh, not from we... Facebook. Uh, Joel Krasko from Kentech. Uh, curious if you have, uh, I couldn't find a contrib section or a group of, you know, here are some existing callbacks that they're all there already. Mm -hmm. um, and then can you, are you going to incorporate Facebook's changes into your base code? Um, Sean, you want to take, I, I know we have some hooks, the, the Facebook changes, I don't think they gave those explicitly back to us. Um, go ahead. I don't remember what Facebook actually gave us and so on. Um, we do have a contrib section and we're in the process of figuring out how to handle things like hooks and so on so that it's clear it's contributed code and we're not supporting it. Um, so you understand when you start using it, whether we're supporting it, whether somebody else might be supporting it, whether it's just not supported at all. So we do have plans for trying to provide spaces for contributed code, and we haven't quite decided exactly what they'll be yet. Okay. Uh, one other operational question. Yes. Will Kia work in conjunction with existing ISC, THCPD, to, in, in a failover state so I could you know, slowly migrate from one platform to the other? No. Uh, Kia itself doesn't do the failover protocol yet. That's something we'll see about doing. Um, as Eddie mentioned, we can potentially do a lot of the, f the same functionality of failover with uh, the databases. Um, we're testing that now to see, to try and make sure there aren't any corner cases that are going to hose over people. Um, so eventually we will put the failover in if that's not sufficient. But again, it's failover is something that's a big chunk of, of work, and we'd like to get a, a bunch of other features done first. Yeah. The other thing on that is we, we feel like databases have done failover pretty well, uh, maybe better than the uh, failover protocol. So uh, again, that's something that we're soliciting feedback on and experience on. OK. All right, well, thanks, everyone, for your time. Uh, enjoy the rest of your time in Chicago.